Hi guys, this video is about slap lesions in the shoulder and what we're going to look at is first of all what the slap lesion is, then we're going to look at conservative treatment options available and last we're going to look at rehab exercises and how you structure the rehab program for it. My name is Mareka, I'm the physiotherapist from sportsinjuryphysio.com where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your injuries. So you can have a look at the link to my website in the description of this video. Excellent, so what are slap lesions? It stands for superior labrum anterior posterior. Very bizarre, but it basically just says what it is. What is the labrum in the shoulder? Let me get this picture up. That's a picture of your shoulder. So it shows that weird thing at the top is the bony bit that you can feel here. It's your scapula with your uh, collarbone that comes together. And then you can see the ball that sits in there. Now, that tendon over the front is your biceps tendon. And if you look on that ball, the ball itself has cartilage over it. And then there's a little nice pocket of cartilage that it kind of fits into. And that's the glen glenoid cavity with the labrum in it. And if we look at that labrum a little bit more specifically, there you go. So now the ball's been removed and you're looking at it like that. So you're just looking at the socket and the labrum is that cartilage um, bit that surrounds it. And it basically makes the ball fit into the socket better. And you can see the biceps tendon comes and attaches just to the top bit there. So a slap lesion is a tear in the superior, so that the, the top bit of the, that labrum, somewhere along that line. And it's graded, depending on whose grading system you use, the most common one is graded in four different grades, and of which the, the type two is the most common, where it involves a labral tear, but also the biceps tendon coming away a little bit. But even that comes in different um, severities. So some slap lesions, can be treated conservatively if it's not a very large slap lesion and depending on the sport that the person does, but others may require surgery. This video is purely about the ones that you're gonna manage conservatively who doesn't want surgery or who can get away without having surgery. So this is not a rehab program for somebody who's had a repair from a slap lesion. This is for somebody who's managing it without surgery. Good, so moving on. Let me just get those other ones out of the background, otherwise they annoy me. Oops, that's the wrong one. Okay, so first step in a conservative program is always relative rest. You have got to decrease your activities that you do to a level that doesn't aggravate the shoulder. Now, often with slap lesions, that's not really a oh, so difficult to get people to decrease le levels because it can be extremely painful. So you don't have to stop all activity, only the things that really hurt. Then NSAIDs, those are anti-inflammatories, so non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. We're thinking of drugs um, like ibuprofen or naproxen or something else your GP may prescribe. That can be useful for this condition to help decrease the pain and allow you to start some rehab. So if you need it, um, speak to your GP or your um, healthcare provider for advice on that. For some people, the pain may just be too much that they can't actually start with rehab and none of the normal painkillers or anything touches it. For them, a steroid injection may be of use. So we're talking corticosteroid injections. I would hang back with that unless you really, really need it because we do know that steroids interferes with the healing process. So you may actually affect how well that cartilage heals in there or your biceps tendon heals in there. So unless you really need it, um, don't have it is basically my advice with regards to that but for patients who just can't progress because it's too painful it can make a massive difference that they can actually start with rehab so it's something to just keep in the back of your mind then when we get to rehab so exercises for this condition there are yeah basically three different parts to it the first is range of movement which means we want to get the full range of the movements it, it gets. Then second has to do with strength and stability and endurance. So it's about the muscle control there. And then the third is that you've got to include sport specific things. So let's delve deeper into each one of these. If we think of range of movement, it's range of movement into every direction. Now, when you 
do this um, movement, which is flexion, you also use your biceps quite a bit. If you've had an injury, a slap lesion that involves the biceps tendon, you, you have to usually steer away from movements that really uses the biceps tendon a lot during the first four weeks because you want that tendon to settle down in there and reattach properly. So if you're wondering how on earth am I going to do shoulder flexion without using my bicep, quite easy. You can use your opposite hand. You can use a wall and just crawl up it to get that. Or I'll show you a picture in a moment. You can be on your side and do flexion in that position because if you do flexion while lying on your side and your um, this part of your hand is turned to the ceiling, you're not actually using your biceps at all. You're using your deltoid to move your arm. So there are ways to adapt exercises so that you don't have to use that. Also in the early phases, you may find that any movement above 90 degrees of shoulder flexion or abduction really hurts. That's okay, especially for the first four weeks. Just do the movements to where it doesn't hurt. So if it hurts to take it to there, just continuously take it short of that and you will find that it will eventually get better and you'll be able to do more range of movement with it. Part of the reason why I think people get these lesions, so it's usually in overhead sports where people do a lot of throwing or pitching, sometimes rugby players tackling out there, but especially for throwers and pitchers or people who does um, overhead serving and tennis, any sports like that, you tend to see that their range of movement for turning back or out, the external rotation increases and they get stiff. They don't have so much internal rotation in that position. And the posterior capsule of that shoulder gets stiff. And what they think happens then is if it gets tight over the, the back of it, it, that tight capsule pushes the humerus head forwards and up so that it puts more strain on the labrum in those throwing positions. So um, what they tend to say is for, especially for the treatment of slap lesions, you have to stretch that posterior capsule as well. The stretch that they most commonly prescribe for that is the sleeper stretch. And I'll show you that in a picture in a minute. But please don't go and make somebody who's got an acute slap lesion do a sleeper stretch because it can be really, really painful. It may be a better option to just start with gentler ones where you just pull the shoulder across um, to get that posterior capsule to stretch. So let me just show you what I mean with those pictures. There we see. So the one in the bottom is the sleeper stretch where you've got the arm in that position and you push it down. Um, it's actually in that position. There we go. Um, and even if you don't have an injury there or you're not a pitcher, it's not a very comfortable position to place your arm in. So really don't go force it at the beginning, especially during the first four weeks. Rather opt for those two movements. So you'll notice the woman on the left or right, I'm not sure which side that will show to you, has got her arm up there. So that stretch is part of the uh, the muscles in the posterior capsule in that position but then the guy has his arm lowered down and you'll find if you do it there you get a slightly different stretch so you may want to include both those so that you work on the whole posterior structure there another thing is if you're going to allow your shoulder blade to come up you're not really going to feel the stretch you've got to keep your shoulder blade down and then pull the arm across so that you can feel the muscle um, and the capsule stretching there properly so those may be better stretches to opt in for at the beginning. Um, let me just think range of my, okay, that's fine. So then we move on to strengthening exercises and we're gonna look at them within the three different phases of healing. So if we think of the early stage of rehab, rehab programs for this is usually about 16 weeks in total. Maybe shorter for you, maybe longer for you, depending on the severity of your injury. But we'll talk about the first four weeks as early stage rehab. During those first four weeks, we're looking for working on stability. So all the muscles that stabilize the scapula, the muscles that stabilize the shoulders specifically, which is the rotator cuff. Um, let me just get that picture up so that I know I'm not forgetting anything. OK, so if we think of stability muscles, we're thinking middle middle traps your lower traps, because it's all about scapular stability, your serratus anterior, important muscle for scapular stability, and then your rotator cuff, which stabilizes your shoulder itself. You want to work with them in stable positions. So now, 
<laughs> the number of times I have patients with shoulder pain who goes, oh yeah, I've been doing rotator cuff exercises and they show me this type of thing. And you go, yeah, but actually, if your shoulder isn't stable at that point because it's got pain in it, doing an exercise in that position can hurt because the stability may not be there. So you want to work in positions where it's really stable. So to give you an example of what that would be is as soon as I place my elbow on there, now there's less stability that has to happen through the muscles. There's more, more passive stability, but I can concentrate more on where I put my place my shoulder blade and things. So especially in the early stages, you want the patient to think about where they feel the shoulder blade is, what the shoulder blade is doing when they're moving their arms. You want to use really low forces and maybe just get them to set their scapula and move the arm without even any weight on it to get the feel for how they control that. Um, you want them to really think about can they connect with where their hand is when they're not looking at it. So doing things like pushing a button at the front and then seeing if they can repeat it with eyes closed, stuff like that. Um, so we're looking for low load, we're looking for high number of repetitions, but everything slow and controlled and thinking about what you're doing. So, and remember, if you think the biceps tendon is involved, you want to avoid positions that load the biceps tendon for those first four weeks. So we're talking about uh, movements that load the biceps tendon is if you do flexion, especially with a hand turned up. So can I show you this side? Yes, flexion like that. That works the biceps tendon a lot. Biceps curls, those you want to avoid for those first four weeks. Um, what else is there? Uppercut movements, that definitely works the, so uppercut is that movement, that works the biceps tendon. So movements that may be safer or work it less are, there are some examples for you. I'm also going to summarize this in a blog post, by the way, so I'll put the link in the description of this video for you so you can go have a look at more exercise examples. <clears throat> There's the flexion on the side, great one to work your scapular stabilizers, stabilizers so your middle traps and your lower traps as you're moving your arm while lying on your side. You've got the seated row, again, getting those scap stabilizers nice and strong. Um, serrated anterior punch, that guy in the middle lying and just punching up with that weight. And the guy on his front there is doing extension of his arm. So also, again, getting your lats working and things, but not working the bicep at all. And then there's a good example of somebody doing rotated cuff muscles in 90 degrees flexion, but with the arms stabilized. And you can see that just using my my leg here, I don't even have to be sitting and doing it at a table. You can be quite inventive. And if a person can get good posture, because I'm quite flexible, you may not be that flexible. You can work it using just your, um, your leg as a support. But the key is, to make it really supported positions for those first four weeks and work on the stability muscles. Don't go and be too active with these things. Um, okay. Then if we move on to middle rehab, so we're looking at weeks five to 12 relatively, but it depends on how quickly the patient progresses. We're looking at getting the biceps involved. So now we want to start loading it. But we're not going to load it in high load positions with arms straight and things um, from the beginning. Better options may be shorter levers, you know, like the uppercut positions or just bicep curls gently, light weights for it to see how it reacts. For other movements like the rotator cuff stuff, you can now start being in less supported positions. You can think of using higher loads, but always making sure that the person has good form with what they're doing. You can also start introducing ballistic movements. So if you think of somebody who's throwing a ball, it's no use you just train them in slow controlled movements. They have to also generate force at speed. So how do you train ballistic movements? It's as easy as somebody just throwing a ball at a trampoline, throwing and catching or at a wall or at you, whatever you want to do. Or with one hand, if they want to do one hand with a tennis ball or something, same thing. But again, you start quite slow, you start quite light, 
You may even start with a foam ball if you don't want too much force through that. <coughs> and then you always, always, always have to end your rehab off with sports specific stuff. And especially if you think of the difference between somebody who's a baseball pitcher versus a rugby player. This one's going to need really high loads that he can handle through those arms in outstretched positions because he's going to try and tackle people with an arm like that. Whereas the pitcher just has to be able to do high velocity movements in certain positions. But he's not actually going to have somebody running into that arm while he's trying to catch them. So you've got to go make it very sport specific for them and make sure that you train them up to that level. I think, oh no, there's one more slide left. It's important to look further than just the scapula and the shoulder, because especially with um, sports where you're throwing balls and stuff, a lot of that power has to be created through the hips and translated through the core. So you've got to make sure that those movement patterns are working properly and that you've got enough strength in those bits that you're not trying to generate all the strength at the shoulder because then you will overload it. So it's a good time to start working with the coach, get them involved, look at the athlete together and make sure that you're seeing that all of those things are being addressed. Um, that's my story for this video. So let me know if you've got any questions about slap lesions. If you need more help with an injury, you're welcome to consult me via Skype or via video call. And the description is in the, um, the, the link to the website is in the description of this video. Have a good evening. Take care.